All right, cool. Yeah, let's kick this off. So thanks, everyone, for joining uh, the 34th Community Call. Uh, we have a handful of really fun stuff to go through. So I think let's start uh, with uh, some of the partnership updates. Nessa, if you want to take us off there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so hello, everyone. Welcome to Gork Community Call. Thanks for coming to join us here in this Twitter space or X space. Uh, we I wanted to share that, you know, in September last year, we announced mainnet partners committed to launching the Agoric mainnet. And those uh, partners are in the works. Uh, we are talking with a few of them to uh, discuss what they might need to launch. And so product and engineering, as well as marketing, is in chats with them. So we look forward to announcing a few of these soon. And we'll have some dates to come. Um, I think I'll let some of the conference chatter come up in a second with Dean, but we had a space earlier this week highlighting the components page that was launched where we talked about some of Byte Pitch's components that they've contributed to the page over time. And so if you didn't catch that, we had a better discussion on that, more in-depth discussion. And what's really wonderful about the components page is that we're tying together all the contributions made by developers via the bounty program. and. Uh, of those, some have more detailed tutorials, such as the lending protocol and um, other ones as well. And it's broken out into uh, DeFi, NFT, and different categories, including uh, interchain accounts and where a smart contract can manage assets to take actions on another IBC and or ICA-enabled Cosmos chain. So that tutorial is being enhanced and uh, finished up, which we plan to share with you all soon. Um, and also, uh, we're excited. We have new bounties posted. Uh, want to highlight the liquidation bot. Roland, if you want to talk about that one a bit further, I think it'd be helpful as we're looking for a bounty hunter for that one now. Yeah, sure. Um, so the liquidation bot bounty is really around uh, building an off-chain service to uh, bid on liquidations for inter-protocol and then also offload them um, so you, you would get the assets on the Agoric chain, and then you'd want to sell them uh, somewhere in, in a live market, which might be the Osmosis chain or might be a, a centralized exchange, depending on the asset and depending on your preferences. So uh, that's what that bounty's for. Uh, we'd love to have an open source implementation of, of a liquidation bot. Um, we sort of expect that over time, uh, liquidations will converge to primarily being bot operators. So this would be the first first known example anyway of a liquidation bot for inter-protocol. So um, super interesting and important bounty. And, and if it's something that you're, you'd are you like to build, you also could operate it. Um, and that would likely be a, a profitable endeavor if, if it was in your interest. So I'll stop there. Uh, but you know, if, if you see the bounty and have questions, uh, we'd love to, to speak with you. Great. And uh, that's on components.agoric.com. You could click on bounties. And uh, there's an application process there in which our team members will then receive it, review it, and reach out as needed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up just the conferences. Dean and a number of team members, Jeet and Hannah, were at ECC in, earlier this month. Dean, do you want to step in? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the conference is in Paris around ECC, as you say. Osmocon and, um, uh, uh, and Nebular uh, were both really great conferences. They were really, you know, really... And it was an interesting, you know, uh, overlapping subsection, but also a different vibe, a different feel, and a different, uh, um, you know, set of people do, you know, talking about different things. Uh, but, but a lot, you know, those were my wrap up of a couple of months uh, going over Europe, talking to the partners uh, in many cases that, that that Vanessa mentioned about how they're using the technology and about what they need for for getting out uh, into uh, production on mainnet. Um, and so I'm really excited about what 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 um, the team has put together there and what those folks are doing. Um, so so that's great. But the big thing that it also really gave me some perspective on what we had produced. Right, June was the, you know as I said in my talks, June was awesome. Um, was June was awesome because it really was the ship of the 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 you know much of the white paper right of the, the 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 core of our platform the core of the economy and there's caveats in a bunch of dimensions but interval inter protocol vaults backed by atom decentralized oracle network you know ability to deploy individual contracts and via governance decide to upgrade them if the if the contracts adopted into governance um and 
a couple of things that were pretty unique that, that, that I'll dive just a tiny bit into the, the, the technical aspects because they're, they're worth noting because they're so different for a Gorak from other chains. So the first is, um, you know, we, we – uh, normal state sync in Cosmos, a lot of people, you've, a lot of people are now familiar with, is where nodes, you know, the consensus is publishing to a place the current consensus state. So, so, so anyone can come along, start a new validator node, bring down that state, and start running without trusting any one individual. They know they're running from the consensus state, but that's just like the genesis state, the state of accounts. What Agoric state sync added is it's the live running continuous state of JavaScript process execution inside of contracts. So a contract, instead of it being a, here's a rule to go from one state and one user injection to another state and now we're done. And out of that, you're trying to build long lived processes and asynchronous actions to other chains. Instead, it's just, no, it's a job, you know, message comes in, JavaScript uh, function runs, and it can send a message to Osmosis and await the answer and send another message over GMP to, um, uh, you know, to Ave, you know, over Axelar, a file point or whatever it is, um, and await the answer. And so you can end up having, instead of large-scale, complicated infrastructure to orchestrate communication with other chains, it just looks like the same kind of async program that um, uh, you know millions of developers are familiar with that can wait for other actions on chains, that can have timers that wake it up an hour from now to do something else and all those kinds of things. And we use that pervasively in our vaults implementation, in oracles, in the liquidation stuff that, that, that Roland mentioned, and so forth. And the thing that so, was so cool about this and part of why that emerged is a lot of those components were built as a result of earlier bounties. They were built, you know, like by Joe of Calypso um, or, or by Anil of Byte Pitch or, you know, any of these folks that, that, that put together and leveraged this model to produce a you know, component that can control another account over ICA. And so this really puts JavaScript contracts uh, um, on Agoric in a position of being able to orchestrate this, this cross-chain activity in the Cosmos and, you know, via... Axelar, Wormhole, et cetera, as these other bridges come online, you know, orchestrate asynchronously these things on other chains. And, you know, and that and a lot of that stuff was, you know, the, 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 the were, was built by uh, um, other developers in the, in the extended ecosystem for Agoric. So I was really excited about that. Those are both very big, you know, very big sort of um, evidence and, and showcasing of our move now to Agoric as a general purpose platform, right? So up until June, we were building the platform, we were building the economy, and now we really get to move to, um, you know, the, 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 the long held vision and the whole point of this, which is, you know, we have a general purpose platform that's accessible to millions of developers. And so this, you know, the thing that, that Vanessa mentioned about rolling out uh, our partners, Right. Those, you know, those partners are now going out spread across a bunch of use cases from rich, much more dynamic and live NFTs to this asynchronous portfolio management um, to a variety of other things. And so uh, the next three months are going to be very exciting. So um, that's what we've been up to. And now Roland can talk about what are we doing more specifically in the near term that gets us on, you know, the, that gets us marching towards all those goals. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Dean. So I, I think as we think about the, the roadmap and the development over the last month and, and the coming months, uh, really the, the summary that people can take away is we are supporting third parties that are coming to us ready to build, ready to deploy. And, and so we have several partners that the partner programs team from Vanessa has, has come in with that we've been working with for quite a while now. Um, and launching the first partner is really our highest priority. And you can, you can think about the needs there in, in sort of two phases. One is work that has to happen to the platform itself to support contracts that aren't into protocol, additional contracts, additional performance. And so um, the, the engineering team has identified some really important things that we want to make sure the platform has launched, like, for example, runaway execution protection. Um, you know, if a contract... Uh, goes rogue, so to speak, that that doesn't bring the chain down, uh, obviously very important. And so there's work going into that. Those kinds of platform upgrades need to uh, go in before anyone could launch. And then separately, each partner may have additional requirements that they need uh, from the platform itself to make sure that either they can uh, function at all or that they have their key user scenarios handled. 
Um, and so really uh, an example of that would be for the CREA DAP, which uh, the, the partner, our partner CRIA has been working on for a while. Um, and many of you may have met them. Uh, they've, they've done workshops on Agoric and they've been with us at conferences. Um, they're launching an NFT platform and they really want to have part of that experience be mobile first. And so the team now is, is looking to understand what it would mean to you know, build in that UX pathway that hasn't existed so far for inter-protocol, um, may bypass the smart wallet UI, which I know is a UX improvement that um, a bunch of partners are going to want and that inter-protocol will likely want as well. Um, and so we're diving into that and it has a bunch of downstream implications. Um, the, the, uh, the other piece of work obviously is inter-protocol still requires upgrades. And, and so um, we've seen on the inter-protocol um, forums and from the econ committee that it's likely that a new collateral will probably get voted in sometime relatively soon. Uh, and so prep work has been done to make sure that inter-protocol can support multiple collateral types. Uh, the initial launch was just for Atom, but we know that ST Atom likely gets voted in, you know, other assets from the Cosmos ecosystem likely get voted in, and we want to make sure that it's at a stable point to accept all those other collateral types. Uh, Dean, I see you've got your hand raised. I was just going to say that that one of the points of inter-protocol is, of course, it's extensible. So the statement inter-protocol requires upgrades, I expect to be true for the next 10 years. Where you know the, the require <laughs> yes. is you know is 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 softer at different times, but there's always going to be some way that the that the economy and ecosystem can evolve to you know incorporate uh, 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 um, the next uh, big insight or the next important collateral. So anyway, I, I'll just say you know the 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 the, in, the extensibility is 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 the big feature in some sense. Yeah, totally right. And actually, that brings up another important uh, piece of work that we're doing on our end as well, which is, you know, thus far, the inter-protocol contracts have been very Agoric Opco led uh, in terms of development. And obviously, the feature set was descri you know, described and discussed with the community. Uh, but starting to externalize some of that development work. Uh, so we have a partner we're working with potentially on, on that, which would include also the product aspect, right? So, you know, which features need to pre be prioritized to really drive IST um, demand, really drive new minting capabilities, drive t uh, ties to specific networks that may be collateral types. All of that stuff um, should be community driven. And so um, we're starting that process now to make sure that it, it doesn't lose its drive, it doesn't lose its momentum, um, but it gets externalized a little bit from Agoric Opco while, while we focus on the platform. Um, so that, that's an effort underway as well. Um, so I think, uh, you know, obviously there, there's other smaller things we're working on. Um, you know, the MetaMask snap, uh, it requires an audit for Harden.js, uh, or rather a code review of uh, Harden.js that uh, Agoric is contributing to. Um, there are a bunch of other smaller things that we're working on as well, but I think high level, the takeaway is really just partner support, deploying third-party applications on Agoric. So I'll, I'll stop there and, and turn it back to Santi or the community. Actually, I want to add one more thing since you just mentioned that, 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 it's wor that there's a lot of people that don't realize that the MetaMask snap, that whole architecture relies on the hardened JavaScript that we built you know, in collaboration with MetaMask. So we work with them to build the, the underlying uh, uh, hardened JavaScript and, um, uh, and help with the architecture of the snaps architecture, which is why we're on the code review for, um, uh, for the Cosmos snap. But uh, it, you know, it's been, they've, been, they've been great partners and it's been great to work with them. And they've been using the, the hardened JavaScript in both snaps and also Lava Mode that they use to secure all their JavaScript um, uh, uh, import architecture. So, so um, uh, that's something that, that you know, again, a, 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 a useful data point for, for how, uh, how this technology is rolling out. That's great. Perfect. Thank you, Roland. Dean, uh, I think maybe we can transition to some community stuff we're working on. I don't know if JD, you want to speak to that a bit? Hey, yeah, yeah, thanks. And uh, I'll actually uh, segue from what Roland was just uh, ended with on the, uh, on the community's role in new collateral types for uh, inter-protocol. Um, as part of that, the Economic Committee shared a suggested template for assessing new collateral types, uh, new assets for collateral, and they made a post in the forum about this. And that template is now available 
as a preloaded template if you create a, uh, a topic in the category false collateral discussion. Uh, so that's the intention there is to make it uh, a, a streamlined process that has a familiar format for all asset types when, when reviewed. But uh, the community plays the role there. And uh, so if you want to see a certain asset as collateral, then there's now a form you can fill out to, to recommend that. Um, and so uh, there's also ongoing discussions around the addition of uh, liquid, stake at, liquid staked atom, uh, both in the form of ST atom and Q atom and the other various options out there. Um, the econ committee uh, has a review, had a, uh, shared an update that they're getting a review from Gauntlet about liquid staked atom. So check into the forum for updates there. Uh, join the discussion if you haven't yet. Um, and then uh, another, uh, the, the ne next for me, uh, a lot of what's been covered here is part of our, uh, is, was all on the roadmap. And so to share, we have a new roadmap summary that we're going to be sharing monthly to provide more details to uh, members of the community about what happened last month uh, with Opco work and what to expect in the following month. And so for this month, most of those updates were mentioned above. It was like Nebular, Osmocon, the components library being going live. Uh, those were some of the main updates. So uh, check in. Uh, the, the, those updates will be shared in Discord, Telegram, in the forum, as well as on Twitter uh, each month. So um, yeah, just uh, be on the lookout for those. And something else to be on the lookout for is we're going to be introducing a new community office hours, which will happen once a month in Discord. The idea of this is to provide a space for community members to engage and discuss with members of Agoric Opco team. That'll be myself and what I imagine is going to be a rotating cast uh, each month of uh, Opco team members, depending on what's going on. Um, but yeah, it's to provide a space so that you can ask your questions, share your feedback, bring up your ideas, and generally it's just going to be sort of an open door office format where if, uh, if you want to know what we're thinking about, we'll share it. If you want to have us think about what you're thinking about, uh, your ideas, then bring them up with us. And then last from me, uh, the delegation program uh, for the validators out there. We're in the final stages of the review process, just kind of wrapping, wrapping up the rest of the, uh, wrapping it up the program. And we'll have updates to share soon. And those updates will be shared in the forum, uh, uh, community.agoric.com. And then we'll also be relaying those to Discord in the uh, Opco Delegations channel. Um, and that's it for me uh, this week. So I'll hand it back to you, Santi. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, JD. Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff going on, and, and yep, around the community, we're excited for that, um, and uh, for the, the office hours. Uh, we'll, we'll be sharing a lot of the things you mentioned as well to the uh, to the uh, in the thread here that um, for this community call, so people can follow through with a bunch of the different you know, topics Roland, Vanessa, and uh, and Dean spoke about, and then JD as well. Um, cool. So I think that covers most of the uh, the the updates we wanted to bring. Um, I always ask, you know, is there something um, that someone wanted to talk about that we have not talked about <laughs> uh, as it may happen? Um, so I'll give it a minute, but if not, then, um, you know, thanks everyone for joining this call and uh, we, we can't wait to see you next time and be on the lookout again for uh, a lot of that, um, the communications um, around things that are happening um, in the short term and things that have just happened over the past few weeks. So, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you all so much. And I'm all right. pretty sure Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.